So I am multitasking tonight. So here's my parawa, my rewana bread that's been rising. There's what uh, my uh, little dough, uh, no it isn't ready. That's, that's my dough that, um, or my starter bug that I've got sitting here nicely. So I'm just going to cover that up, put that in the warm place. And then we'll get on to the oh. kombucha. Right, so I've got one parawa or rewana in here. There now that's doubled its size. I've skipped the bread making option, and I am going straight to bake only. Okay, and that is starting. So while that's baking, there's another one in there that's trying to rise. So I will go back to my kombucha. Right, so here's my kombucha bugs. So a kombucha requires a SCOBY, which stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast, which is a mother. So we've got the mother sitting on top of this one here, which is about to be um, bottled. I've just formed a new bottle um, of kombucha. So what I've done, this is a 2.8 litre. I've got six, had six tea bags in this bottle. So I'm about to add my sugar. So for this I'll probably put about a three quarters of a cup, half to three quarters of a cup of sugar in here. Right, and then I'm going to stir that around. So it takes roughly around um, two weeks. For my kombucha it takes less than two weeks. It just depends on the weather as well. So in the really warm months it's not going to take as long as the cold months to um, to ferment your kombucha. So I will show you what um, the mother looks like. So here's a kombucha mother or a scoby. Actually we've got two in here. So as they grow old they sort of die off. This is um, the mother that I've used in the previous brew. These little things are rains in, so don't don't worry about that. Um, so it's quite a huge mother. I could probably split this up into about six or seven little baby scobies, and here you see a new mother forming on the top of the old mother. And all this this gunky stuff, don't worry about that. That's just little bits that fall off. It's not rotten, or it's not going to harm you in any way. It's all just like yeasty little bits and pieces. So I'm going to place, if I can get a hold of it. And you can filter out your um, kombucha drink too to, to filter out these little bits of mother or the bits of yeast that come off it, off the mother. But there we go. So I'm just going to place the mother on top there. Actually, <laughs> I should take some out because that's just too much. Which I will do. But in the meantime, and, and you can put some of this liquid in too to get it started. So that's your starter and um, that's your mother. So I'm going to fil just filter this, take some of this out and... Um, show you what I do to bottle it or how do you, how you know it's ready. So I've um, drained some of the kombucha out, I've put the starter liquid in and then I've topped it off with cloth. So it needs to be able to breathe but keep the little insects out. Um, fruit flies, love this stuff. So with this I'm going to put that in the hot water cupboard a couple of weeks or a week I just keep checking on it and I'll see how it does I'll, for now I'll put that to one side and so that's the liquid that I poured out so this is a kombucha that's been sitting for about um, nearly two weeks so I don't know if you can see but there's a little bit of bubbling happening there a little bit of fizz so this is my daughter's kombucha so I'm just going to take the mother out See, um, 
that's the bottom side of the mother, which has got a little bit of ear in it. My daughter likes her little pet kombucha, and here you've got some new growth happening here. So we'll plonk it in there. And then, can you hold this for a sec? Just, just that part here, where my hands are. Alright, and what we're going to do is just tip a bit in there as our starter for our next. So, bottling it. Bottling your kombucha. So you, the best type of bottles that you can use is the glass ones with the little stopper top. Some people use plastic, and I have to, so sometimes I, I, I do a batch or so in the plastic bottle. It doesn't really last long enough to um, for it to, um, the cork to pop. So anyway, I'm going to do probably a full kombucha jar, then I'll, and what I do is that I also strain it. Okay, as I tip it in. And what you can do from there is that you can put a flavour in. So I'm going to put lemon, honey and ginger flavour into this bottle. Uh, it's already got some sugar in it, so that sugar is going to feed it and make it fizzy. So I've tipped it in, poured it in. Still got some left, that's okay. And so what I'm going to do now is just add our flavour. So I will, sorry it's hard to operate this end. And you probably leave it for a few days and it'll fizz right up. Then there you go. With glass bottles you've got to be careful that if you haven't got the stopper top or some kind of release that it won't break. You can actually burp the bottles and let some of the gas out but what I found is that they refill quicker than you can burp them. So I have an example here. So this is a milk bottle. The, the bottom is convex. This is two days after I have opened, oh, have bottled it and as you can see it's not going to sit flush. But I'll just to demonstrate, oops, I've let some of the gas out. Look how it's fizzing up really beautifully. So um, this is a, what I call a kefucha. It's a cross between a kefa and a kombucha. Look at that, that's just beautiful. Right, Shivali is going to um, do the taste test for us. What does it taste like? Well, you can taste the ginger and the honey, but you can also taste the lemon in it. Is it fuzzy? Yeah. And do you like it? Yeah, it's actually quite nice and refreshing. Okay, fantastic. So that's kefucha kombucha with kefir in it. Now just allow me to show you what kefir is. So kefir, unlike kombucha, excuse Shivali, unlike kombucha um, takes less time to ferment. You've, it, it has little grains in it that just keep growing and growing and growing. So it'll probably take a couple of days for the first ferment to happen. So there you go, you can see some bubbles in it. I put raisins in it because they're a good indicator um, to show if the drink's ready. And you can see some little kefir grains. And now if I can just get a hold of one of those if I could. Um, yeah, I can't get a hold of one. 
Yeah, they, they do. They grow bigger and they split apart. So Miss Shivali's got a kefir grain. This is water kefir, by the way, so don't confuse it with milk kefir. Milk kefir's um, totally different. So this was a big grain and it's broken up into little grains. Um, and I will show you in another video on how to, to look after your kefir grains. But in the meantime, we're going to uh, enjoy a bit of kefucha. Kefir is on, on, on its own is lovely. Kombucha on its own is lovely. The best tea bags to use with kombucha are either just your common um, black tea bags or your green tea. Um, with my last brew, I used both because somebody had delightfully gone along and mixed the green tea with the black tea. But that the beauty of it is that it does not matter. And coming back to our Rewana bread, I've left it in a warm place and it's rising really nicely. Um, as for the Rewana that we've started, 15 minutes into it and it's just looking really lovely. So anyway, hope that inspires you to um, make kefir and uh, we'll see you again. <laughs>